In today's episode, I'm going to share with you the final part of how to monetize your origin story. We've been through my origin story, your origin story, the pitfalls of creating an origin story, and today we bring it all together by adding mentors. Now, this show is dedicated to help you to jump and grow wings on the way down. You're watching Speak on Stage. Hi, I'm Dave Crane. Welcome back to the show. This is a part four of season four. Just starting the whole season with a bang because the beginning of a new year. I know it was four weeks ago, uh, but it still is kind of now. And if you're watching or listening to this weeks later, or even months later, or even years later, then that's when we did it, 2024. There we go. Okay. If you're watching, by the way, and you want to interact with us, then you can do. If this is the first time it's broadcast, then uh, you're, you're watching me as I'm watching you. Kind of creepy and weird, but big smile. And also, I brushed my teeth. That's what's good. Um, in which case, uh, let me know where you are, what your uh, thoughts are, any comments, any questions you have, and I'll interact with you. If it is a replay, by the way, I'll come back later on, uh, and I will give uh, my feedback and everything that you want to ask and chat about. The origin stories are always a challenge, but it's a really great opportunity to dig in deep and boost your marketing just by being who you really are. Now, I know you're thinking, Dave, well, I know who I am, but no, your audience doesn't. When we're talking about why that's important, well, let's put it into perspective. So far, across all the many seasons, we've conducted lots of different conversations all about how to grow your business, but origins is so important. Why is it about your origin? Because it's free money. Now, this podcast, Speak on Stage, if you missed the first three episodes, go back and wherever you normally get your access to podcasts, it will be there waiting for you. I would urge you to listen or watch all three of them because they're really, really important. And of course, if you just joined us now, welcome. Wherever you are in the world, you're welcome to join this community and also to get more out of your life through marketing, speaking, and growing where you are. Now, if you're wondering where I am, when I've just come back from speaking in Davos, uh, in the World Economic Forum. I've got more gigs coming up all around the world. So the stuff I'm sharing with you really does work. It's not just me making it up and hoping that somebody gets, you know, a clue from it. I'm showing you my success model so you can get access to it. And do the same kind of things that I can do. And here's the thing. You might not want to be a speaker. You might not want to speak on stages around the world. You might just want to make a bit more money or teach your kids to do so or even become a better marketer. All this stuff comes together at the level that you feel comfortable doing it. So at no point think I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to do it. This isn't for me. I promise you, it doesn't matter where you are on the food chain. There's bits and bobs you can take from here that really help. So let's look at the power of mentorship. The way we're going to do this, uh, and I'm a mentor, as you probably know, uh, and I work with people around the world, my industry icon program, but I also work with lots of people on different levels. We've got various communities, a game changers community who meets once a month, but they're all trained up to be able to grow their business and connect and also ask each other questions. And also the Turbocharge Your Career five day challenge community with over 400 people in a WhatsApp group where I train them to be able to grow who they are and what they do. If you don't know about that and you've never joined us before, then you're very welcome to take a look. This is where we are. Just go to the QR code, hold your phone up, and uh, then click on the link and ask to join. And as long as you're not a serial killer, I'll probably let you in because I'm nice that way. If you are a serial killer, I'll probably let you in because I'm nice that way. But please try not to hurt anybody. I'll edit that bit out. So going back to where we were, the power of mentorship is really important. Now, all great heroes, all the people you love uh, in the real world and in the made-up world have a mentor. Whether you're talking about, say... So I talk about the hero's journey. I'm not going to spend too long on this because that's a whole new can of worms that I don't want to open up. But when you look at your heroes from Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, Ben Kenobi and Yoda became his mentors at different stages to help him grow his, uh, his ability to find success as a Jedi in Spider-Man. Then you start off with Uncle Ben who helps him to be able to realize the importance of power. Every single person, whether it's Superman and, uh, uh, what's he called, um, Mr. Kent, his dad, his, his adopted dad. At every stage is a mentor that comes along and really helps you to grow. And at your life, I guarantee somebody made a massive difference because it turned around and said, I can help you with that. And you're like, who are you? And then they show you and you go, wow. And then they usually disappear into a puff of smoke. 
Now, we don't normally do that. We just go back to what we did before. But that little insight helped you to get over a load of challenges that you were carrying around and helps you to go even further. I'm going to illustrate some examples of that in a few moments' time. By the way, if you just join me, this is Speak on Stage. And you're very welcome to ask questions as we progress. And if you want to know more about anything that I cover, then I will cover it in more detail in the previous four previous three uh, episodes of Speak on Stage. So don't worry if I go over it too quickly. There is more and teaching you step by step how to do it all. So if you want to look at mentors and you want to look at the impact, let me share with you the people that I look after and I've worked with and uh, who've seen the results that I bring to others as well. I have been participating in Dave Crane's Industry Icon Program. Dave Crane is one of the best coaches in the industry. One of the most knowledgeable speakers I know. I was so impressed. He shared the stage with celebrities, athletes, politicians, and royalty. You've been an inspiration to me since the first time I saw you on LinkedIn, man. New prospects should know that you are a world-class broadcaster. He's a true professional. He operates from his heart and he always speaks his truth. <laughs> Where do I begin? I looked around the room and all I could see was eyes on you, ears on you. You could have heard a pencil drop. Dave is someone who is a limitless thinker um, with a big heart. And his industry icon program helps coach great leaders into becoming great speakers. So there you go, that's the Industry Icon program. Now, if you want to join that, there's details for that when you can join our updates program. There's lots of stuff I, I could share with you. The links will be um, somewhere in the comments on this particular post, or maybe it's going to be in the write-up and the details there. But let's go on with how do you create your origin story? Well, I'll go through it very, very quickly to not spend too long on it because I've done episodes just covering this. But there's seven points that you need to be aware of. First one is this. You need to identify your deepest core wound. What makes you you? What's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome to position yourself as you? Everyone's got one. Mine, for example, was the fact that because I'm of color, when I was very young, I had to work really hard to be able to be accepted like everybody else because I stood out like a sore thumb and most people expected me to fail. And if you're of color or you're from some kind of diverse background, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Next thing is to establish what nobody actually saw inside you, what they didn't know was going on inside your mental health dilemma, your challenges that you were dealing with on a daily basis, because people don't know that. And remember, I'm not asking you to get therapy out of this. This is not therapy. This is a part of your origin story to get people to resonate with you, to understand why it's so important that they do see you as a success. And they also champion your future by becoming a client or a follower or a fan or even a supporter in what you do. Number three is then look at the outside world's expectations versus your struggle. So what does that mean, Dave? Why does that fit in with you? So you had a challenge where you didn't think you were good enough or you had to work extra hard to be there. Well, the outside world's expectations was very simple. If you want to be a success, you need to become a lawyer or become a doctor or become one of these conventional jobs. Why would that bother me? Why should that be of interest? Because there's no way in God's green earth I was going to be able to do that the same as everybody else. Could I become a lawyer or a doctor? Possibly, but not against a system that had challenges in for people of color. I know this is 2024. Trust me, when I was getting into this in the 90s, it was realistic to go, you know what, it's not going to happen. In fact, I'll tell you a story about this. I went away to study law. So I qualified to do a law degree. And I met with the student committee, which is all the top sort of lawyer people um, as students. And we went down to, it was in Essex, we went down to Chelmsford Courts. And we met a top judge who sat with us and there's about eight of us sitting around and he was talking about the progress and the, the, the opportunities and the growth and how you need to study your law degree but also come into the courts as often as you can uh, and connect with people to make contacts. And he singled me out. He said to me, because you're black, you're going to have a hard time, harder than anybody else because it'd be a while before you get accepted. And what it did to me was made me think, well, I don't really want to be here anyway. I'm only doing law because my parents said, go and do law. And I went, okay, does that mean I get to leave home and you pay for it? In which case, the answer was yes. 
And I thought, I don't want to be here. If I'm going to find it that much harder than everybody, I don't really want to study law. I wanted a law degree, but I didn't want to study it the same way as everybody else. And I know you're thinking, are you being lazy? It wasn't that. I'll tell you why it changed. Because when I, I'm a very social person, or at least I was in those days. Um, and so I enjoyed being connected with people. So when I first arrived to do law, everybody's talking, everyone's socializing, fantastic. But then when we got to the second year of law, everyone disappeared. Everyone dressed differently. They all wore suits, they all carried briefcases, and they would study on their own. For me, as a social animal, that was very difficult to deal with because I like to collaborate and share ideas and grow together. I don't like the idea of going like this and hiding my stuff from people, so I found that very difficult to deal with. So when I was told that you're going to find it even harder on top of that, forget it, I'm done. Okay, so that makes sense? Good, all right. So that was my struggle. All right, number four, describe the incident that changed things. Well, in my case, it was very simple. And you get all this on uh, episode one, by the way, of season four. Have a li listen to that or a watch of that, depending on whether you prefer the podcast or the TV show version. Uh, the incident that changed me was hosting a big event uh, and holding a microphone and getting a chance to prove that I was really, really good at talking to audiences. What did it do for me? It made me realize, first of all, that I'm in the wrong career. I should be entertaining people for a living, which I did when I was much younger, and not trying to get a normal job with everybody else, where all the skills I have to really get the Wi-Fi code of an audience and engage large groups of people would never be used. In a court of law, they would, as a barrister or as a solicitor, I would get the chance or opportunity to project and act as a lawyer to a room full of people who are making notes. But to get to that stage was far more difficult than just being an entertainer. So that's what made a big difference for me. And then which mentor came along and how did it change things? Well, the mentor that came along was a friend of mine who was a DJ at the place where I got a chance to hold a microphone and, and host a family fun day. And he said, you should go to the holiday resorts in the UK and I'll contact them and you'll go along and have an audition. And if it works, then you should definitely leave this because this, this place isn't right for you. This job isn't right for you. You need to go away and study. And Gus was amazing. I haven't seen him or been able to contact him. I don't remember his second name, so I couldn't even look him up on social media because it's going back about, woof, I made a noise like a dog then. I don't know why I did that. Probably about 35 years ago when uh, we had this conversation. So he, he drove me to the actual auditions and then persuaded me after I passed the auditions to actually go ahead and you know, take the job. I mean, I left everything I'd learned behind around the law course. I went off and the rest of it was history. And then number seven is this. You can actually draw a straight line between everybody you are, everything you are now, everything you do now, and the impact that came about through the hard work that you put in because of that experience of working with that mentor. So when I turn around and people say, because here's the thing, right? If I talk about, you know what, I'm, I'm really successful at what I do. In fact, if you want to know who I am and what I do, have a look at this. So yes, it is impressive and it is a bit of a wow. And when I go on stage, it's a great way to introduce me to the audience. But right now, LinkedIn and social media has everybody showing their very best stuff. And the problem is it's really annoying to look at all the time because it makes you feel inferior. You look at somebody's stuff and you just go, I don't want to play with that person because they're going to turn around to me and say, you're just not good enough to be on my gang. If, they, if I contact them and reach out to them and say, can you help me? They're going to go, no, you're too far below me. Why should I bother talking to you? And so it's important to be able to resonate with people by saying, look, yeah, I might be successful now, but I wasn't always like that. I get where you're coming from. I get your journey. I'm a little bit older and a little bit further on down the line. In fact, I can mentor you and help you to get to where you want. Or maybe you can join my company. Or maybe we can partner, do a joint venture. Or maybe I can be a bigger supporter and connect you with people who will be able to help you on your journey. This is a whole point in creating your origin story and sharing with people because then they'll understand that the version of you that you put on social media is a culmination of a real human being that went on many journeys and had to grow to be the person that they are right now. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. All right. 
So let's get some examples of that. Let's have a look at some of the big hitters and who they are and what happened. So Elon Musk was uh, mentored by Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel came along, helped him to understand about embra embracing risk and realizing that his mentorship uh, encouraged him to take more risks in his business. And uh, one thing is definitely sure, Elon Musk does risk his business uh, quite a lot. In sometimes ways you'd say, don't say that, but there you go. So with that, he goes for impossible goals, and he learned that from Peter Thiel, strategic thinking. Without that, he would never have been considering about going to Mars or creating electric cars for everybody or, or many of the other things he did. So that mentor changed him. Now he was successful anyway. He was making money anyway, but his money came from emerald mining in South Africa, a very different business from being a tech guru, which of course he is now. And Steve Jobs, another person who can turn around and like him or not like him, it's not going to bother him right now, but he had Robert Friedland who turned around and helped him to understand the importance of embracing innovation, the importance of designing stuff effectively with great aesthetics and also being a visionary leader. That didn't come just from him. He was very young at the time, but he had mentors that helped him to get along with that particular journey. Let's look at a few more mentors. Mrs. Duncan. Now, you might say, does she have a first name? Well, I don't know, and neither does Oprah Winfrey. Why? Because that was her teacher at school. Taught her all about the value of self-worth and empathy, and also the power of education. When she learned that at a very early age, her entire career suddenly opened up for her. She was a, a failed anchor on a news um, agency or a, a news TV show, cable TV. Didn't do very well on that, or at least got enough to be kind of visible, but then took off as one of the most successful TV presenters and hosts of all time with over $4 billion. An incredible woman. But Mrs. Duncan, her teacher, taught her this at a very early age, took her under her wing and helped her. Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs helped him to focus on impact and the importance of having a cult company culture that aligns with your particular vision and having a long-term vision. So even the short-term problems that come along don't matter. You can overcome them. Let's look about in perspective. So when you talk about somebody like Mark Zuckerberg, he invested something like $16, $17 billion in creating his uh, Metaverse project and poured it in over, what, two, three years Metaverse will be everything. Do you remember when we had all the videos and you're thinking, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to go there. I want real people and real life. Well, his long-term vision has allowed him now to snap back into making incredible profits for Meta and Facebook purely because he's got a bigger game to play. He's shifted a lot of his resources, if not all of them, into AI rather than Metaverse. And guess what? He's back at the top of the food chain doing what he does. And that comes from his mentor, Steve Jobs, who did overcome a ton of different things in his career. Think about Steve Jobs and Pixar. You remember Pixar and creating the Mac and all the rest of the stuff? That's Steve Jobs. Forget even Apple as your iPhone. There's a ton of stuff in his story before you get there. Richard Branson was taught all about how to launch yourself properly and go up against the big boys with his airlines by Sir Freddie Laker, who previously started um, airlines and gone up against all the big carriers and done well for a very long time. And Richard Branson created Virgin Airways on the back of that. So his entrepreneurial spirit overcoming adversity and being able to be customer focused, not just thinking about the guys in the boardroom, but creating a success mark that, that hits everybody. When you think about a Virgin product when it comes out, whether it's Virgin trains or Virgin phones or Virgin airlines or, or Virgin music as it used to be in the day, the reason that you resonate with it is because you know that it's made for you. Richard Branson doesn't wear a suit. You'll never see him wearing a suit. You'll see him wearing maybe at the most a jacket, but normally he'd be wearing like jeans and a t-shirt or a jumper or something because he wants it to be that there's no barrier between the way he dresses and the way that you resonate with him as a person and his vision. That came from Sir Freddie Laker. Maya Angelou, mentored by Mrs. Flowers, her teacher once again. That's why when you think about your teachers at school, do you know their first name? Probably not. It's just Mr. Piper or Mrs. whatever it would be, Mrs. Smith. Or well, Mrs. Flowers was Maya Angelou's um, tutor at school and taught her a love for language and how to overcome silence. And that's why she became one of the most famous poets and thought leaders of her time. And self-expression, her ability to come up with some amazing, wonderful ways of looking at life purely came from that time her mentor, her teacher, helped her to grow internally and share that with the world, which we all benefited from. 
Serena Williams. Now, you might have seen the movie King David. That was her father, Richard Williams. Sorry, not King David, King Richard. Duh. We'll get it right, Dave. Read it properly. Um, so Serena Williams, and if you watch the movie, you'll understand that her and her sister uh, overcame so many things, race and finance and other challenges, and then became the number one female tennis player of all time. Real master of the game, had mental toughness to overcome everything. Even now, this challenge is thrown at her that she has to overcome, which doesn't seem fine or fun, but she does it. And handling pressure when most people would crack and give up and have a nervous breakdown, it's almost like she's unbeatable. And that came from a mentor, which is her father, Richard, who taught her to be so strong. Warren Buffett was mentored by Benjamin Graham. Uh, Warren Buffett, if you don't know, is one of the world's top in, uh, investors. Uh, and he learned at a very younger age about the importance of value of investing, also risk management, and having patience. Set it and forget it. Think about things that are going to work in the future. Buy a lot of them and wait. And he's one of the richest guys on the planet by no accident. And he keeps giving the money away by no accident to help good causes and making more all the way. Why? Because he's brilliant at what he does. But that didn't come from him. It came from his mentor that started him and kick-started him on the way. Jeff Bezos, mentored by David E. Shaw. Do you remember when Jeff Bezos, who's obviously the, the guru behind Amazon, it was just a bookstore. In fact, it was just a place that just sold little bits online, went head to head with Barnes and Noble, then realized that people on a journey. Well, David E. Shaw taught him the interest and the understanding in e-commerce that flowered into this incredible business that has made him a multi-billionaire. Even a very costly divorce still keeps him at the top of the food chain. He learned his business acumen and also how to use technology to be able to innovate and get people to buy stuff without even having anybody, any humans anywhere near it. And if you've been on Amazon recently and you've bought some stuff and you've had a challenge with it, it's so easy to send it back, to turn it around, to get help, all the things. Why? Because of innovation and because Jeff Bezos was shown how to have that at the start. I'm not saying that Jeff Bezos did, did everything directly as a result of David E. Shaw, but once he'd learned how to do things, he was able to grow himself as a result of that. So your legacy is everything. Your ability to be who you are is really important for you. I'm getting messages sent through here. Really important for you to be able to understand who you are and how you get to be who you are. And when it comes to your legacy, there's a couple of things you need to do. Now, as I mentioned that, your legacy is, well, people will buy from you based on the fact that they know who you are and what it's worth to work with you. I've shared with you a formula for being paid. The formula for being paid is this. First of all, the impact of what you do, the effect of what you do for other people, and secondly, how cheaply can you be replaced by somebody else? That's what people pay for. That's what people are interested in. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, or any of that stuff. It's really, you know, what is it? And that legacy, the origin story is a major part of doing that. So when I mentioned about your origin story, and I'll go through it very quickly here again, identifying your deepest core wound is number one. Number two, establishing what people saw inside what nobody saw inside you but you knew what was going on and nobody knew about then also number three sharing the outside world expectations versus your struggle when i say sharing this whole thing is what you share these are the step-by-step -step parts of your origin story write them down and talk about the elements that really impacted you not in a way that makes people not want you don't say well you know first time i went out i was shoplifting and I still feel the need to steal now don't say that but say maybe you had financial challenges and you were very tempted to, to break the law. Put it in a way that people would understand but, or avoid it completely depending on the, the, the business you're in. But talk about your early challenges and overcome them, the struggle that you have. Number four is describing the incident that changed everything. Number five, what did it do exactly for you and the spark that lit the fire that turned into a flame that made you the person you are today? Number six, which mentor saved you and how did that mentorship change things forever involving your life and number seven declare how your current triumphs are 100 percent due to the things that went on in the past if you need to do a screenshot of this i'll make it nice and big 
So you have a copy of that, keep it on your phone and work your way through to create your origin story. I go through this all the way through, by the way, in depth in the previous three episodes of Speak On Stage. Get it as a podcast so you can listen to it in the car or as a TV show on Spotify, iTunes or any of these other places. Wherever you get your best podcasts from, that's where we hang out. Okay, so when you talk about your legacy, why is that important? How can it turn into money? Well, the fact that once you create a relationship, especially if you're a coach or you're a speaker or you're creating a community of some description, it can turn into great things. I'm showing you this diagram for a little while. Let me share it with you. Okay, so the Industry Icon Program, which this is based on, allows you to understand that speaking live is worth a lot to you around the year. Now, these numbers aren't for everybody. These numbers are usually based on if you focus on improving what you do and you already have an, you have an impact anyway. So if you're speaking live, you can earn a million dollars just by doing it at $15,000, $20,000 a, a time and having it online and offline. I'm not saying everybody should do that. Treat it like a buffet. This is a combination of lots of different skills and areas that you put together. So forget the numbers, just look at the strategy. There's coaching, there's creating a global reach for your existing products and services. It's ins inspiring followers and fans. It's creating deals and joint ventures. It's influencing as an influencer with open minds and their money that comes to help you as well. And the way that you bring these together is creating different signature revenue things built around your skill sets. So it could be that you create paid memberships, consultancy and disruption for the industries, Monetizing a podcast's sponsored ambassador, you represent organizations, you organize events, you mentor and you coach others, you create a book business model. I'll tell you about that more depth in a, in a few moments. Um, seminars, retreats and summits, online training courses. You do PR, networking and interviews. You run mastermind groups. You create paid content creation for other people and then you create create products that for yourself, they're able to license uh, or systems that you're able to license as apps or so on. Put this together and you're looking at great big figures and why do people want to work with you? Because your origin story, you know the origin story of the people that I mentioned earlier. I mentioned about Oprah Winfrey, I talked about Steve Jobs, I talked about Mark Zuckerberg. Why do you know that they're successful even though they've got more money than anybody else? Because you know the humble beginnings or semi-humble beginnings that they came from or the things they had to overcome. The origin story allows you to do that. So when you create your personal brand, I can tell you in 2024, Forbes say it's a, it's a top seven in-demand skill for people to be able to look at you, understand you and say, I want to work with you. Most people don't have this. Most CEOs, most decision makers are completely invisible outside of their immediate group. And there's no reason for anybody to turn around and say, I want to work with that person. That's why you've got such a huge advantage right now to do something that these guys don't do and raise your game and connect with more people. So I've got a book coming out soon. It's a little teaser, The Thought Leader's Playbook. If you're interested in that, then make sure you're in my community. And when it launches properly, which is shortly, then you get a chance to access it first. Let me tell you that it's doing really well in the re feedback and re reviews I've had from people. Uh, the Thought Leader's Playbook, there you can see. Uh, and some incredible thought leaders around the world have read it and gone, ooh, Dave, this is something special. It creates trust and credibility. And ultimately, that's what you have to be doing. If you want people to work with you, they're going to trust you. I'm going to know that there's proof out there that you are as good as you say you are. If you haven't created that, then they're just taking a word value. And uh, that's a very dangerous way to invest your money. So here's what leaders are saying about the Thought Leaders Playbook. Um, well, before we actually go into that, if, you'd, if you're interested in working with me as your mentor, then here's your QR code. And I'm talking about the different projects you could be interested in doing. So first of all, uh, if you want personal branding or you want to do public speaking or you want to attract fans and followers or maybe even overcoming imposter syndrome, something that holds you back or launching your own podcast or TV show or making great content, writing books or courses, organizing events and retreats or monetizing your expertise, especially if you're around the age of 50, you've been around for a long time, you've done some amazing stuff, but the world hasn't paid attention to you yet, now it's time to do it, or creating your legacy, and you're interested in having me as your mentor, get the QR code, just hold up your phone, 
and click on it will take you to a sales page and just book a session with me we've got a special deal that we've been going um since we started the black friday promotion because people turn around and said that's what we want to do that's it perfect have a look at it yourself and you'll find out exactly what i'm talking about so let's have a look before i appear on somebody's forehead and that somebody is dave ulrich the father of modern hr of godfather of modern hr i worked with many years ago and he's an incredible guy forbes global F top five coach and says, Dave Steps will help anybody become an industry icon. The ideas, examples, and exercises in this book offer a practical blueprint for building your personal brand and identity. Outstanding guidance for a personalized world. And he would know better than anybody else. That's why people revere everything he says. Next up on this is Joel Com, another friend of mine, best-selling author, uh, speaker, and influencer. A really good guy as well. Dave Crane's book is a tre tre treasure trove. Of, in fact, I'll say it again. Dave Crane's book, his ability to speak is not so good, but his book's amazing. Dave Crane's book is a treasure trove of wisdom on creating and leveraging personal brand in the digital age. His insights are essential for anyone looking to establish a strong online presence. Next up, let's have a look at Raymond Aron, New York Times bestselling author. Dave Crane's approach to building a personal brand is groundbreaking. His methods for crafting authentic and compelling online identity are invaluable for any aspiring leader. Look at that. Not bad, eh? Uh, Dr. Corey John Block, far too good looking for his own good. UAE's top business coach and a really cool guy. Dave Crane doesn't just walk the talk. He walks you through every step from overcoming public speaking jitters to the conquering the dreaded imposter syndrome. This book is packed with practical solutions and confidence boosting strategies. It's about building a tribe, not just your followers, but a community that champions your success. What sets this book apart is an unflinching focus on monetizing your expertise. You're saying, Dave, why are you reading it? We've got it in front of us because we also do a podcast and people can't look at the pictures and read it. That's why. And also I've got a massive ego. And I just I haven't really. And I just want to read it out. OK. And also Richard Hill. One of my clients as well, um, CEO of investment banking and technology influencer, really got some incredible software in lots of different fields, one of which is Vote Our Voice software, which allows him to work out whether the politicians you voted for actually did do the stuff that they said. So you can tell a percentage of results of what they said they were going to be doing, what they got voted on, and what the results were. And this is what Richard said. I'm a disciple of Dave Crane's industry icon. I implemented many of the lessons from the case studies into Vote Our Voice company strategies, and I used the activities to lead my employers and clients. It's a unique blend of real-world case studies, actionable exercises, and inspirational anecdotes make it an indispensable resource for anybody looking to master their destiny, refine their brand, and enhance their influence. Now, here's the thing about it. When I read out something like this, you're thinking, Dave, but you've said to us before, don't read something out loud that we also have to read at the same time because they cancel each other out and we don't take in anything. I'm aware of that. But if you listen to a podcast, you had no idea. And now you do. And uh, Anthony J. James is probably one of the biggest hitters on LinkedIn. Australia's number one LinkedIn influencer with 4 million followers. Oh, my goodness. And a really cool guy as well. In the Thought Leaders Playbook, the chapter on storytelling is particularly impactful. Dave's techniques for crafting compelling narratives are a must for any communicator. Thank you again, Anthony J. James. Make sure you connect with him as well as the other 4 million followers that he's already got. And if you don't do it, he won't mind because he's got 4 million to start off with. So that's the Thought Leaders Playbook. Hope you're ex excited about the opportunity to read that. We'll talk about this in a future date. Uh, we've got some incredible guests coming up to be interviewed on future episodes of the Thought Leaders Playbook. But meanwhile, with the origin story, go back. Go back over the last four episodes and internalize it and create your own origin story. Use it everywhere. Put it onto your posts. Put it onto your Write a book about it if you want to, but let everybody know who you are in a way that develops and grows them. And by the way, make sure you join us on our live LinkedIn audio. Uh, Sunday sessions are becoming very popular where we go through all the stuff we've talked about in this podcast and previous ones. And people get to ask questions and answer everything, but I crowdsource the questions and answers. So everybody who's in the group is really well informed and smart, usually smarter than me, and they can answer a lot of questions themselves. And it's free, and you're welcome to join us on LinkedIn to be able to do that. My philosophy on life is jump and grow wings 
on the way down. That's what drives me, and I hope it drives you as well. And thank you for joining me. My name is Dave Crane. It's been a pleasure having you here on Speak On Stage. In the coming seasons and episodes, we're also going to be including interviews with thought leaders and big hitters. And if you're wondering who we've got joining us in the future, you just have to keep tuned and check it out on my social feed. Connect with me everywhere and you won't miss a thing. This is Speak On Stage.